I am very honored to have with me Professor uh, uh, Mercantini and uh, Dr. Federica Mazzuca uh, to speak about uh, uh, what we learned during the uh, social emergency from COVID-19 on the subject of the uh, information management and uh, multidisciplinary discussion of the cancer patients. This is our uh, disclosures. And uh, in the last months, uh, we identified several subgroups uh, of COVID patients who appear to be at increased risk of, in, uh, of the uh, extreme morbidity and mortality, including those of uh, advanced age, male sex, uh, and those with comorbidities such as uh, hypertension, chronic Lyme disease, uh, diabetes, and uh, obviously cancer. Many scientific societies, including uh, ESMO and uh, the Italian Association of Medical uh, Oncology, have proposed uh, specific guidelines to reduce the risk of contracting uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection with the aim of uh, protecting the health of uh, uh, cancer patients. And the health and the social emergency from COVID-19 requires special attention to be paid to oncomatological patients, as well as to patients suffering from diseases associated with, for example, immunosuppression, for at least three reasons. The first one is the need for frequent access to health facilities, with consequent a greater risk of exposure to SARS-CoV-2 uh, virus. There is a greater vulnerability for complications, uh, even serious ones in case of SARS-CoV-2 infection linked to neoplastic pathology or to the effect uh, of uh, drugs, radiotherapy, or uh, surgical treatments with consequent uh, greater mortality and morbidity due to the complications of uh, COVID-19. And finally, there is a greater difficulty in making an early diagnosis of SARS-CoV-2 infection due to the coincidence of the symptoms of infection with some side effects of oncological therapies, such as febrile neutropenia, interstitial pneumonia, diarrhea, anosmia, heart, and the central nervous system pathologies. Obviously, the term uh, uh, cancer encompasses a myriad of diseases with uh, a diversity array of primary tumor subtypes and stages affecting a very heterogeneous group of patients of all ages, all of which result in a very different cancer prognosis and outcomes. Therefore, uh, labeling all cancer patients as uh, uh, COVID-19 vulnerable is probably neither reasonable nor informative, uh, as reported in a recent ESMO expert consensus. However, based on the lack of evolving evidence, there has been little attempt to define the individualized risk for a given patient taking into consideration their primary tumor type, stage, age and sex. In this context, and taking into consideration these difficulties, ESMO developed a detailed set of clinical statements to guide healthcare professionals in overcoming many of the clinical and technical obstacles related to diagnosis, risk assessment, response assessment, uh, surgical planning, radiation therapy, and medical treatment during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. In uh, addition to providing an important series uh, of information useful for the optimal cancer care in the presence of the virus, of the virus, the application of the recommendation of the ESMO experts would allow the collection of an important series of clinical data as a dynamic knowledge rep repository that will be more informative by accumulating data on SARS-CoV-2 uh, biology, COVID-19 pandemic characteristics, the risks 
of COVID-19 and its modulating factors in cancer patients. All these activities require the availability of a platform dedicated to a multidisciplinary discussion, possibly even remotely, and to the collection of all this kind of information. Furthermore, we must remember that precision medicine has taught us that information deriving from omic sciences can only provide us with a part, albeit a very important one, of what is necessary in the personalization of treatments and the overall management of the cancer patients. But influences on the individual phenotype are typically multifactorial, and we must take into account the environment, the lifestyle, the familial history, as well as several other factors, such as microbiota, drug-drug interactions, physical activity, just to name a few, reaching billions of measurements for each medical intervention. Even from a data analysis point of view, an epochal change is underway. From the intuition of the individual physician, we moved on the evidence-based medicine. Today, it has become essential to be able to analyze a lot of information at the same time to arrive at what we can define as a real-world clinical trials, a new way based on precision medicine and dedicated algorithms. Obviously, uh, um, if randomized clinical trials remain the gold standard for demonstrating the efficacy and safety of uh, drugs, of uh, new treatments, there is a growing recognition that the randomized clinical trials alone cannot provide sufficient data for informed healthcare decision making in some situations, and especially in difficult clinical situations, such as in the presence of comorbidities or in older patients or in very old patients that we encounter uh, every day in our, um, in our daily activity. Because, uh, because the real world evidence can capture the use of medical treatments in real life setting, it could be used to better understand and characterize patients and evaluate uh, new treatments. In fact, uh, we need to collect and evaluate uh, a lot of clinical information, often uh, organized in parallel la layers, which by definition, if are parallel, are separate and never met. The prospective collection of all this information combined with important analytical tools, mostly yet to be fully identified, will allow us to make significant progress. And in this context, the possibility of having an electronic platform capable of managing this enormous amount of data has become obviously essential. This strategy, has been used by the FDA, and in particular with the recently signed agreement with Google to collect and analyze data uh, deriving from a clinical trial. But this is not only the information that we can measure with our instruments in our hospital that are important. There is a growing interest in information that the patient can provide directly or that can be collected through wearable sensors, for example, or measurement made at the patient's home. This is uh, our example, our proactive approach, the ImmunoSafe project, uh, in which uh, we, uh, are, uh, we uh, have implemented a platform to follow the patients in the uh, therapeutic path in agreement with uh, an uh, Italian uh, company. We know, even if not completely, what happens inside and around uh, a cancer cell. Uh, we know very well uh, 
the PD-1 and PD-L1 axis, we know very well some mutations, uh, some uh, interactions between drug and their target and so on. But we have uh, uh, some other information about uh, biological and uh, clinical factors that are able to uh, turn simple interactions, I mean uh, drug receptor, uh, or uh, uh, target uh, uh, or biological drug with a specific target uh, in two complex ones. But we need the technical and the clinical instruments to ameliorate this journey, such as new approaches in handling informations. And now we are uh, using the uh, network medicine uh, based uh, and uh, introduced by Barabasia to Erlo Scalzo several years ago at the Howard University, together with our colleagues from physics in our university, and in discussing them, probably such a new structure of the molecular tumor board, not only a bureaucratic regulatory element in the clinical discussion. In uh, the last decade, uh, the great uh, advances in high throughput technology have led to massive amounts of data capable to provide the new opportunities for uh, identifying potential biomarkers and developing effective treatments for human diseases. Unfortunately, there are some barriers to a wider use of real world data because only the amount is not enough. This is very important to be remembered. The only amount is not enough if we are not able to understand what happens inside on the cancer cell, but in our patient. And it is necessary to have a single platform capable of integrating all these informations, providing doctors with simple, understandable, uh, and rapid answer. In uh, this period of SARS-CoV-2 pandemic, we have learned how to collect data on a single platform to analyze them for each individual patient in order to activate multidisciplinary discussions even remotely and above all to collect all available clinical information in a prospective manner to be uh, able to analyze it later with the strength of a prospective collection of data. The Navify Tumor Board solution was chosen in our university and is a clinical decision support solution specifically designed to improve the tumor board preparation and organization. Then I want to uh, move my presentation and give the presentation to my colleagues. Dr. Mazzuca, in our university, you planned the incorporation of a digital tool such as Navify for the multidisciplinary discussion in gastrointestinal tumors on the molecular tumor board several months ago. What are the reasons that made this decision appropriate compared to the more usual discussion of disease management teams? We realized that uh, molecular tumor board should not become a useless bureaucratic tool for applying the use of a drug in the presence of a specific molecular alteration, but the multidisciplinary discussion and to be based on the, the most complete and uh, detailed clinical information possible. Furthermore, uh, by implementing all the information on a single platform, we would have an enormous amount of clinical data collected in a, a prospective way. This approach represents the premise of a retrospective study, but based on the prospective way collected data. 
a sort of, a sort of uh, a real world cl clinical trial and uh, finally the, having the information on the same platform constitute the premise for an important progress uh, in teaching in the university. Our doctors in training can acquire the knowledge of the different problems of the same patients seen from the different perspectives, such as those from the different specialties. Thank you, Dr. Mazzuca. And uh, how uh, the pandemic became the driving force uh, in the implementation of tools uh, more uh, rapidly? After the first online meeting, it became clear that the platform simplified the discussion considerably. Uh, allowing us to have uh, all the information we, did, we needed on the same IT tool. The alternative represented by the discussion of the clinical case in the form of case reports forced us to open other programs, for example, uh, for the analysis of laboratory or, and radiology data, uh, wasting time and uh, energy for them. Uh, such a great uh, tragedy has turned uh, into an extraordinary opportunity for growth. The time saved uh, has allowed us to be able to dedicate more resources to clinical activities alongside the patients. Thank you, Federica. And uh, Professor Mercantini, what they were uh, immediate challenges encountered uh, and the processes implemented to identify solutions? Uh, and which was the impact of incorporating digitalization uh, such as uh, Navify into uh, your daily practice? Good morning to everyone and thanks to Professor Matti for the question. Um, my name is Paolo Mercantini. I'm a, I am a general surgeon at Sant'Andrea of, uh, of the University of Rome, La Sapienza. My specific field of application is the mean invasive intestinal surgery, in particular colorectal and gastric surgery, and I am in charge in the management of two more meetings regarding colorectal cancer patient. So our experience in multidisciplinary management of colorectal cancer patient goes back more than 10 years ago when we began to discuss each individual patient together. We met in a classroom of our university at Sant'Andrea Hospital, together with more than 30 attendants of all grades, including surgeons, oncologists, radiotherapists, radiologists, and pathologists, both consultants, residents, and students uh, attended our meeting, along with our nursing case manager, uh, who was the real chief of the meeting, um, because she keeps note of every final decision. So in uh, these uh, uh, 10 years, uh, we have discussed uh, more than 300 patients with gastrointestinal neoplasm, almost uh, uh, 200, uh, and 250 colorectal uh, neoplasm cancer and 50 uh, gastric cancer. In, in November 2019, we introduced a digital tumor board platform in the patient presentation mode. And at the beginning, this mode allowed us to standardize the modalities of patient presentation, making them more usable and homogeneous, and to collect a large number of patients and data. Next slide. But in March uh, 2020, uh, something happens in Italy and the COVID-19 pandemic outbreak and uh, suddenly all the meetings and all the gatherings are prohibited. And so we are forced to stop our weekly boards uh, for two weeks. Uh, the difficulties in the management of patients with colorectal cancer began bigger and bigger also because the number of patients does not decrease. So our university, uh, Sapienza, implements 
uh, begins to implement a virtual uh, meeting by favoring uh, the use of a virtual platform as Google Meet, uh, giving uh, full access to all the personnel. So on uh, 26 of March to 2020, uh, the first Sant'Andrea virtual uh, meeting uh, took place uh, using a platform that we were already used to join. Next slide. Uh, from now, uh, the, the data are at least uh, rather curious because we realized that, that nothing changed. Uh, indeed, the number of patients uh, that we were able to discuss uh, during the meeting increased. In fact, the average number uh, of uh, cases discussed in each meeting went from five to eight from each meeting. We realized that the virtual meeting is easier to manage and to carry out than the classic meeting. There, the, there is more participation by colleagues who become, who become more polite by uh, raising uh, their hands for each intervention. There are also the possibility to share imaging studies by physician outside the hospital. I uh, reported uh, together with uh, Federica and together with other colleagues uh, our uh, interesting experience uh, um, in a recent paper published uh, on a European Journal of Surgical Oncology, uh, that is a, a European scientific journal with an impact factor of uh, four. Thank you, um, Paolo. And uh, now um, to Dr. Mazzuca, um, um, what were the reasons why you decided to analyze the data of your experience with uh, the electronic platform and publish them? Well, we all understood how important it was to have a lot of data on the same platform for research purpose. And uh, the, therefore, it's important to us to share these results with a scientific community, a prerequisite for future important future development. In fact, now in uh, my university, uh, we have many research uh, in uh, initiative underway. The last question to uh, Paolo Mercantini, what do you think uh, the future will look like? And uh, now, considering that COVID-19 pandemic uh, seems to be over, uh, we are not sure, of course. We are trying to return to normality, but uh, at the same time, we realize that it's very difficult to come back. For many aspects, as already said, the advantage of virtual meeting are evident compared to uh, the form classic meeting. And probably the solution could be to mix the classic form with the virtual one, allowing uh, many participants to choose between in presence or online participation. Uh, certainly, we are happy with the Namify platform for two more board, uh, which makes uh, easier the management of a virtual meeting at least in our experience. So in the future, we are going to continue in this way and uh, trying to merge the standard virtual meeting and uh, allowing and trying to facilitate the participation of an increasing number of uh, uh, physicians. Thank you, Professor Mercantini. And thank you for uh, all the participants to this uh, uh, roundtable.